What is up everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be deploying a Mern stack application to production. So we are going to make it live on the internet. So the services we are going to be using is for our front end and our back end deployment for the node application and the react application. We are going to be using Heroku. It's a really nice platform and it has all of supports all of these languages. Okay, and for our database, we are going to be using MongoDB Atlas to deploy whatever we have in our database. Okay, so this is the actual deployed application. Up here you can see it's HTTPS, Mern Pagination, Heroku app. And we are able to paginate between pages, fetch things from the database. It says loading. And if you are interested in building this application we have here from scratch, I have a video on that and I'll link that in the description. So um, if you're not going to follow that, you can go to this um, GitHub link. I will link this down in the description as well. And then you can just clone it and start from there. That is what we're going to be doing today. So um, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so first things first, let's get the application from GitHub onto our computer. So I just navigated in my terminal to my desktop and I'm going to go to GitHub now. And here I'm in the, rep the repository link. I'll set this link in the description as well. And here we go to code. We choose HTTPS and we just copy that link. You go to our terminal here and you are going to need git installed. I'm guessing you already have git installed. So you're going to say git clone and then paste in that link and then enter. And this will create on our desktop over here, we can see that application. So that is done. So let's CD into that Mern and then pagination and then open it in Visual Studio Code with code dot or whatever text editor you are using. So here we have our application. So first things we're going to need to do is um, actually get the data which is in the utils folder over here. We have the post JSON data, which is like 500 posts. We need to get this data onto our MongoDB Atlas cloud cluster. So let's actually go and create that cluster now. So now that we have the project on our computer, let's navigate to our browser and let's go to MongoDB Atlas. So you're going to need to create an account. And then once you've created an account, we can say new project. I'm going to call this project Mern Pagination next and then just create project. I don't have to fill in these things now. I'll do it in just a second. And here we have our project. So we are able to build a cluster. We're going to use the free tier on this side. And here we just choose our cloud provider. I always go with AWS. I don't really use these. And then I'm going to choose Ireland because that's nearest to me. Um, just choose whatever, which one has a star recommended regions. And then, yeah, then you'll be fine from there. We're going to give the cluster a name of Mern Pagination and then build or create cluster. So this is going to take up to uh, one, one to three minutes. So while this is happening, we can go down here to database access and network access. So first database access. Here we want to add a new database user. So it's here where you create whoever has access to this cluster. So we can just add Lloyd123 and then you can either uh, auto generate a secure password and it gives you like this type of um, generated password or you can just type in your own. Oh, what did that happen? Or you can just type in your own. I'm just going to make my password the same. Why does that keep on happening? I'm just going to make my password the same as my username. I won't recommend doing this, but for the demo purposes of this, I'm just going to do that. So, and then we say add user and we can see here, this user has read and write to the database access and it, Google actually warns you that that's not a really good password. So don't use that password for production. This is just, I don't want to set up uh, too hard things now. Okay. And then we want to go to network access here under the IP 
address you want to add an IP address and once again you'll most probably add your actual server you're hosting your node application on um, IP address here but I'm just gonna allow from anywhere and then confirm okay so now we can go back to the cluster and we can wait for this to finish so once this is finished we will continue okay so this took about let's say two minutes to complete and the next thing we need to do now is connect to this database so here we um, click on the connect tab and then we go to connect our application you can choose your programming language i'm guessing you're using node and we you want to set this version to 3.6 or later then we copy the string so you can see in the string it is a connection string to our database and here we have to add the password we created so i hope you remember that password anyway so let's copy this now and then go back to visual studio code and in here we want to once again create our um, config.env because inside of our server.js we can see it's looking for this config.env so let's quickly do that in the root directory we're just going to say config.env and here we have to add a few things because we downloaded this from github um, it did not push the config.env of the previous project so we have to add it manually here so first things let's add our port and set our port equal to port 5000 let's add our mongod mongo underscore uri equal to whatever we just copied from mongodb and let's change the password part here to whatever our password is like this and then the next thing we're going to need here is um the node underscore environment so our node underscore environment at first let's just set it at development like this and save and let's go back here so let's actually quickly first install everything so in visual studio i'm using the integrated term terminal here i'm just going to run in the root directory npm install we only have to quickly do the install for the the root directory we don't have to cd into the client and run npm install there and the reason for this is because we're going to need to use this import script over here to quickly import our data and this import script needs access to connect db and connect db in exchange needs access to mongoose so yeah anyway just run the npm install and here we're going to need to do the following in our package start in our um, script if we go to our script folder under utils import data we can see we have the following script we need to run we need to run um, this folder and then with a flag of import so it's going to use our cl cloud mongodb database due to the fact that under the mongo uri we have this cloud one over here so let's quickly test that out and we're going to say node and then we're going to navigate into the utils folder and choose the import data.js file which is this one right over here and then space and then dash dash import like this so let's test it out hopefully nothing goes wrong let's run it should say connected to database awesome the connection was successful and then hopefully it says um, data imported awesome data successfully imported Okay, and the emojis just make it so much better. Okay, so if we go back to our MongoDB Atlas cluster and we click on collections, we should see our data. Now that I think about it, I actually forgot to add the database name. So we can quickly do that here. If you remember to do the database name, good for you. Um, one step ahead of me, still working, please wait. Oh, okay, here it is. So here I can see I did not add the database name. So it just added DB name from the connection string in our config.env. I never added the database name over here. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to remove that and say mern dash pagination and save this. Close up the config folder. Then I'm just going to delete this. I have to copy this name and then paste it in here and drop this database and then I'm just going to re-import it quickly 
So we actually get two tries now. I'm just gonna up arrow key and run this script again. Okay, great, that's good. Let's see, let's see. It should work. It worked the first time. Okay, great, it worked. Okay, so let's go back here and refresh. Now we should have a database name, main pagination and our 500 posts over here. We can see the total amount of documents is 500. Okay, great stuff. So our, dat our data is imported and our database is set up on the cloud. So now we have to go to Heroku. So once again, on this platform, you're going to have to sign up and create an account as well. And then you're going to have to install the Heroku CLI. So I'm just gonna Google this, Heroku CLI. And you can click on the first one or you can actually, if you have Grepper, the Grepper extension, you'll see it up here. I'll just click on the first link and this will take us to this page. So how can we download the Heroku CLI? So here is the steps. I'll link this in the description as well. If you're on Mac you can and you have Homebrew installed, you can just use this script here. If you're on Windows, just choose your operating system type and then just download it from here and for Ubuntu. And then it has a few things here. I'm sure you guys can figure this out. This is really um, just install and going through the the wizard once that is complete and you have set up your heroku account which also is fairly easy we can now go back to our application over here and we're going to need to run the following command first off we're going to say heroku and login and this is going to ask us to press any button and you're only a able to use Heroku if you actually install the Heroku CLI. So here I'm just gonna press enter or space and this should open a browser that asks me to log in. As I'm already logged in, it's just going to say you are already logged in and then you can close this. I'm gonna go back to my application and it says here, logging in done and I'm logged in into the account I used for my Heroku. So that's great. The next thing we need to do is really easy we're just going to say heroku create and then we can specify an application name or we can just press enter and it will create a random name for but the thing about this name is it should be something that hasn't that does not exist yet so i'm just going to press enter and it's going to generate a heroku application with this weird weird name over here so it auto generated the name so if i were to click on this link now control click and open this is going to take me to my heroku application and if i go back to my heroku account and refresh over here we should see a new we should see this application being listed down there okay so here we can see that application is on heroku at the moment so the next thing we need to do here is add our um, config file so heroku is going to need access to these properties over here but we are not going to push our dot config dot in our config dot env file because this is only mainly used in development so what we're going to need to do now is go to heroku and then click on the application you just created and then go to settings and then under settings we can see config variables so that's exactly what we have in that file so here we just reveal our config variables and here we can enter the key and the value same as here which is the key and the value so let's start with the port we can say port and set port to 5000 and add we can now copy mongo uri and paste the mongo uri in here as well as the string you can copy the string, make sure you copy everything correctly. And then we can paste that in here, add and create our node environment and paste that in here. And now it's important here, our node environment is development because we are in development here, but we want to set our node environment on our server to production. So here we're gonna say production, just like that and add. So now Heroku has created basically a config file for our application on Heroku on the server. So once that is done, we can just go back to overview and we can check a few things here. So once we create, uh, ran that Heroku create command, Heroku created a remote repository for us. So if we type in, in our terminal, git remote, 
we can see the following two things. The origin is from where we actually downloaded or cloned this re repository. And re Heroku over here is um, referring to the repository we created when we ran Heroku Create. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is actually prepare our application for deployment. So let's do that next now. So we're going to have to do a, thing, a few things in our React. I'm going to show you a few things in the React side and a few things in the Node side. So let's do that next. So in order for me to show you exactly what needs to happen, I actually changed my mind. So I'm going to actually CD into the client folder. And here I am going to run npm install. Just so that I can show you exactly everything that's happening and why we are doing the certain things. Okay, so once that is done, I think this is going to take a little while. So let's go into our server.js. Here I'm going to add something critical. Okay, um, we're going to have to check what node environment we are currently in. If we are in development, we want something to happen on the node server. If we are on production, we want to serve our React build folder through our node.js server. So I hope that makes sense, but I'll show you exactly what I mean by that now. So I'm going to keep this to development for now and inside of my server. Okay, so this is done now. And inside of my server, I'm going to do the following if check. I'm going to say if my process dot env dot node underscore environment is equal to production just like this. If that is the case, I want to run an app.use piece of middleware. And this piece of middleware is going to do the following thing. We are going to say here, express.static. So we want to give our server access to our React application. So we're going to say express.static. And here we're going to need the path module from node. So right at the top here, I'm going to const path equals require the path module, just going to close this down. And here I want to say path dot join. So I want to serve a static file or folder from the path I'm going to specify here. So I'm going to say underscore underscore der name and then comma. And then here I'm going to say the client. So we want to go into the client folder because that is where our React application lies. So we're going to say slash client and then slash build. So you might ask me now, what is this build I'm talking about here? Well, if I scroll this up here and go into my client folder and the node.js or the package.json uh, folder, here we can see under scripts, there is a build script. So I'm quickly going to run this script and show you what it does. So I'm going to say npm run build. So this will just give us a production compressed version, minified version of our React application that is easy to deploy. So in this build folder, it just created up here. We're going to have a few things. So the build is complete. Great stuff. So in here we can see we have a static folder that has all of our CSS, minified CSS and um, all of our JS scripts and everything in here. And then we have our index.html, which is just uh, this unreadable minified version of our application. So we want to serve this build folder. So that is why we're going to app.use express static, which just means we give our express application access to this path. So we want to serve the underscore underscore der name, then go to client and then the build folder. So this is a piece of middleware we want to run. The next piece of middleware we want to let happen is the app.get. So whenever we reach a, a get route on our application, we want to do the following. So we have our normal request and response. And then we now want to res.send file. So we want to send inside of this build folder. The main intro to our application is this index.html. So we want to send whenever we hit a get route on our server. So this means any, any route. We want to serve that uh, index.html. So once again, path.join. And here we want to do the following underscore underscore der name. We want to get the client folder 
and then we want to get the bold folder and then inside of the bold folder we want the index.html file so with this we can this is going to serve our react app to our server and then the else part we can just add app.get and then the slash we don't even need to do this actually but i'm just going to do that to show you the difference so here are the request and response and then res.send api running and save this so this is the important part here we have to do this in order for our um, Heroku server to um, serve our React app. So if we save this now and actually open up two terminals, the first terminal I'm, uh, here I'm going to cd into client, just like keeping client on this side. And here I'm going to go back to the server and I'm going to run both of these things. So let's quickly test that out. And then I'm going to show you, I'm just going to remove this build or let's just keep the build there for now. And here in this folder, I'm going to say npm start, which is going to use the script in here, npm start, and it's going to serve nodemon. Okay, let's run that, see if it works. Server is running on port 5000 and connected to our MongoDB Atlas cluster. And in here, I just want to say npm start and run it from here. And now we should see something very interesting. So this is where I'm going to show you the, the two different things. If I actually go and open a new tab here, this is our React app being served. So you can see this React icon shows here it's red. And if I click on this, this page is using development build of React. So this is just serving from the non-minified build folder. So I want to go here to local host um, 5000 and run. And we can see here API is running. So this is this part that we created here. So once I go into my config folder and change this to production, we can see something else happening now. So I'm going to stop my React um, folder over here. I'm going to close it up here. So if I refresh, it's just going to keep on loading because there's nothing there. And this is still running. So now I'm going to change this to production and save this. I'm going to restart my server. And now we're going to see something interesting when I go to localhost 5000. So here I'm on localhost 5000 and I'm going to refresh and ta-da, I see my React application. So now it is actually serving the production build of our React app. So if I view here and I click on this, we can see this page is using the production build of React. So I really hope you understand what I did here. So now basically all we have to do is set up a few scripts. So when we deploy to Heroku, it will do all of these things of creating a build folder and then serving that build folder from here. So let's do that next. So now that we have set up our application so that it works um, perfectly fine, let's do the last part of create or serving this to Heroku. Okay, so first things first that I want to do here is just close this up. I'm going to go into the client and I'm going to remove this build um, folder because we're going to create a script that will do that for us. So inside of our root directory, we need to add a very important file for Heroku. This file will tell Heroku what to do. So first thing we're going to say this file is just called proc file, just like this. And you can see a little Heroku icon showing. It doesn't have any extension, just like that. And in here, all we're going to say is web and then colon. And this tells Heroku we're using a web server. And you can read on the documentation, there are different um, things you can prefix here. And then we want to tell Heroku what to run. So we're going to say node server.js because this is where our server starts running and serves our react app and all those nice things so we want to add our basically our start script and we can save this and close this up and the next thing we need to do is actually i'm just gonna close this here oh i don't want to close i'm gonna remove that one and let's go to our just root directory here and inside of our package.json, I'm going to have to add a script. So this script I'm going to add here is called Heroku-post-build. So it's 
it's important that you name it this because Heroku looks for this and it would run a few things um, for you. And what do we want it to run? Well, we want it to go into the client and then call this script to build the application. And then the rest of our application should work. So let's quickly do that. Here we say npm underscore config underscore production. And we're going to set this to false. And the reason we set this to false is because if this is not set to false and it's set to true, then um, we can't run any scripts while this is already in production. So we first set it to false and then later it would be set to true. So the next part of the script we have to add is the following. We want to say npm install and then dash dash prefix that with the um, client. So we can say client folder so we want to prefix the client folder because now we want our server to first go and install all the node modules and everything because in our git ignore we don't push the node modules to the server and the next script we want to run is npm run build and also prefix this with the client folder and if we save this now this should do the trick I believe this is everything. So the last thing we need to do is go into our root directory here and say git add. So we want to add all of this to our repository because our repository is also connected to Heroku now. And then we want to commit everything. So we can say git commit dash m and then um, final deployment prep or some a cool message i'm not really creative with these messages and then commit all of this and the last thing we need to do if we type in git remote i think i showed you this we have a heroku remote repository so all we need to do now is say git push heroku and then master whatever your branch name is you want to push so we want to push the master branch and let's see if this all works so um doing this type of things it is possible to run into errors but we'll solve that as we go so now it's going to push our entire application to heroku and it's going to build and install all of the node dependencies and then it's going to run this um, config script we ran here so it's going to install our react um, application it's going to uh, run the build script and then we should be able to see it on heroku so once this is done, this is going to take a, a little while, um, but once this is done, I'll get back to you. Okay, so here we can see it logged, build succeeded, and now it's just compressing, and it should be done any second now. We can see that the entire project is uh, 64 megabytes in size, and verifying deployment is done. Awesome, so this is great. So... Let's close up this React app and we can actually try and refresh this application now. I'm going to show you if you don't have this open. I'm going to close all of this up. And then in here, when you navigate to your Heroku dashboard and go into that specific um, application and then say open app. Um, and here we have an error. So let's quickly check this out. What does it console.log? Resource not found. Okay, so let's figure this out quickly. Okay, so here it says that we are getting a 404 error. So that means that the React app is not um, being recognized and it's not serving correctly. So, so let's go back to our application here. And I checked everything here is correct. And then I realized inside of my package JSON, this script, I forgot to place double um I'm not, i think it's called ampersand double ampersand here for and so it was only installing and then never creating the build folder and i think that is the reason so just add this here and save let's have to, we have to go through that entire process again of git add and then adding it git commit with a message and saying um fixing deployment bug and then committing that and here we're going to say git push heroku master 
So this is the thing about doing these little DevOps type of work is you run into these bugs, but you just have to keep on trying to debug them. And I think I'm going to leave these errors in the video so that you can just see these kind of things happen. And let's actually hope this solves our problem. So um, once this uh, build and deploy is complete, I will be back to you again. Okay, so let's cross our fingers and hope this works. I'm going to go and refresh this page. And it's working. Yes, it's working. Okay, great stuff. I'm so excited right now. And yeah, so we actually left the deployed um, application on serving only four things here. So you can go and fix that or we can actually fix this together. Now that we know exactly what went wrong, let's just check our console that there's no errors. No errors. This is great. Okay, so let's quickly fix that um, inside of our controllers, post controllers. Let's just change this to 20 and save this. And once again, we're going to have to go through that entire process. Git add, git commit dash m, and then fixing return results. And then git push Heroku master. And then we're going to do that entire process again. And then I'll be back to you once this is done. Okay, so here we can see everything looks fine. No errors, build succeeded. Yippee. So we are basically done. Um, I really just hope you understood what I, what I tried to explain during this video. I know I made a few errors here and there. But that is the process of deploying. It's not always perfect. And uh, we just have to redo and try and redo and try the whole time. So let's refresh this. It should only return 20 on a page. And it should give us 25 pages. Booyah. Okay, so now we have our application live on the internet. And everything seems to be working perfectly fine. So if you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you are interested in seeing these type of DevOps things. I do apologize for the mistakes if you got a little bit irritated about it. But this is what happens. And I like leaving it in the video, just being transparent um, in everything that happens. And if you want to see different uh, hosting providers like Linode, DigitalOcean, or all those type of things, I would love to make videos on that for you guys. But um, smash that like button if you like this video. And then I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.